And, you know, I remember the doctor saying to me, the only issue is your egg quality. That's it. You're young, you're healthy, you have no red flags. The only issue is your egg quality. And we're fixing that. So it's going to work. You know, so we did that live transfer. We had all the hope in the world. And, um, and it didn't work. And so much like all of my previous treatments, as soon as we got the negative pregnancy test, they said, let us know when you want to try again. And it was like right away. You know, just just got to keep going. If I, if I don't take the time to think about how much this hurts, I won't have to worry about it. Just got to keep going until I get to that baby. No matter what. I, I never in all my life um, during those treatments had one positive pregnancy test. Um, and that, that, that's, that was a really hard thing. I, I couldn't accept the phone calls anymore after the blood work. You know, thank goodness for my husband because he was just as devastated as I was, but he'd take the call. And then he'd have to come home and tell me. I don't know how he did that. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we did a live transfer IVF cycle. Then we did from frozen with two embryos. Then we did another one with two embryos. And after that last one that didn't work, I was um, throwing my energy into repainting the house. Fresh start, right? So I was painting the living room when he walked in and I, I just could tell the way he opened the door. I didn't even have to look at him. We'd been through it too many times. And I knew that if I was pregnant, he would have been running through that door. <laughs> I got an email from a good friend of mine they went through treatments and ended up with twins. And so she's like, I have been following uh, this woman. I get her emails regularly. Um, and at this point, she already had twins. They were three. And, um, and she had gotten pregnant on her own after that. Um, and so she had really been a support for me um, and a hope, right? You know, something happened for her that everyone said was impossible. And so I opened the email and it was a forward um, that she sent me from her email and it was the Fertile Heart email. And I read it and I, it felt like a light from inside. It was just this like connection with the words. Um, and so I clicked on the link and I went to the website and I read as much as I could read in, a, in that period of time. And I ordered the book. Um, actually I downloaded Inconceivable right onto my phone because I wanted to start reading it right away. And I read front to back, if I had a paper copy, but it was on my phone, every, every word within 24 hours. Um, it was like being dehydrated and finally having a sip of water. There was somebody else out there that knew what it felt like. And that was just as desperate as I was. And survived it and listened to our body and figured out a way. And that was, was so huge for me to connect to. Um, you know, I, I can't remember if it's in, inconceivable or fertile, the fertile female, but when you talked about the, the golden rope, right? The golden rope and that. I just grabbed a hold and I refused to let go because it fueled me up. And it was amazing because it was just so energetic and we finished our vacation and we came home and then I got the call. Let's do one more. You still have frozen embryos. Let's do one more. And I, you know, it's, it was just like a trap. <laughs> just sucked me right back in. And I remember being like, I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to go back to this after. And 
you know, a part of me felt stronger after having read it. And so I felt like I could do it. I could do it again. And this time would be different. Um, but it wasn't. And that's when I ended up painting our entire living room in four hours. <laughs> um, and so after that, I, you know, thank goodness I had already, I already had that safety net. Fertile Heart was already there for me. Because I'm not, I'm not sure I would have even been able to find it. I was in such a bad place and having such a hard time getting out of bed and finding food to eat and getting outside and doing the things that I normally love to do. I was on vacation. I was supposed to be doing the things that I liked, like going to the ocean, but nothing seemed to heal me in the way that I needed. And so um, I ordered the the fertile female and again read it cover to cover without putting it down and it was it was oxygen <laughs> it was everything i needed and i remember sitting on the couch one night trying to explain it to kevin <laughs> it, you know because he's like what are you reading what you know you're like not even looking at me when i come home um and i just said i, I have to go i have to go to woodstock I don't know what else to do, but I have to go. Um, and that thought like scared me to death, but was also something that I had never felt so strongly about in my life. Um, I still am much better now, but still struggle with new things or new places. Um, going somewhere with someone I, you know, without anybody I know or, um, not having some sense of familiarity. So to go to a place I'd never been before and go to this woman's house who I'd never met before and be with people I had never met before and open myself up to talk about something that was shattering me, had already shattered me into millions of little pieces that I didn't know how, how to put back together again. That scared me a lot. I think I emailed Julia and said, can I bring my mom? <laughs> and, you know, you so kindly said to me, you know, bring her to Woodstock with you. Have her drop you off. <laughs> and that's, that's what happened. You know, we, we made the long drive and she stayed overnight with me and she dropped me off and she picked me up. And then we drove home after. Um, but it was it was really hard for me to take that step um and and i also vividly remember sitting you know in the in the room while everybody was arriving um taking nice long deep breaths to calm myself and then you know julia came in you closed the door and you said i just want to congratulate you you're here Look at those two empty seats. Those are people that couldn't walk through the door. It was like you gave me a hug. <laughs> I just, those words were so key for me in that moment. It allowed me to just know that I was in the right place. I was doing the right thing. I was doing something for me. And it was going to help because it already was it gave me the faith to really throw myself 110% and I remember thinking I'm here I'm doing this I'm going to make this count for everything all that matters is just being present and whatever happens happens and if at the end of the day I walk out of here and it wasn't right it wasn't right but that's okay because right now I'm here and it was the right thing. It still was the best decision, aside from marrying my husband, that I've ever made in my life. I don't know where I'd be or who I'd be, actually, if I hadn't walked through that door. Because I still, see, that was September of 2010. 
almost 11 years ago. And I use my fertile heart practice every day. And it continues to give me gifts every day. It allows me to view myself and life and other people, challenges and good things all in a different light. I'm a better me, I'm a better mom, I'm a better wife, friend, daughter, all because of what I learned and the support that I get. <sighs>